Welcome to Nugget 357 with Steve and Dana Groman. We forgot to read one of the slides on the last oh, nugget. No. Well, not we, me. I guess so. I guess so. I'm sorry. So we're going to do a quick one to finish up this planetarium space section at the State Museum, and then we'll be moving on to their geology section. Let's do it. The sign reads, Earth's place in the solar system, the habitable zone. Too cold, too hot. And this is the funniest part of the whole sign. It says, not to scale. You think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Um, the moon is 250 below to 250 above, depending on the sunny side or the dark side, so they say. The moon's pretty close to the Earth. Yeah, it's a lot closer than Mars or Venus. Um, well, we're talking according to their, their distances. <laughs> well, let me read what I forgot to read in the last nugget. Earth's stable orbit has helped create... Earth's stable orbit has helped... They don't even have this right. I thought I couldn't read. Earth's stable orbit has helped created our unique world. No, it's helped create well no it hasn't helped create <laughs> this is a mess our <laughs> stable orbit has helped created. help create our unique world <laughs> does there anyone have proofread this stuff i guess not at the perfect distance from the sun, Earth lies in the sun's habitable zone, an area that is not too hot and not too cold. And that's what you were just saying. Mm -hmm. Well, why can't we be on the moon, supposedly, if the moon's so much closer than our... <sighs> okay. Allowing Earth to maintain an abundance of liquid water. Because of this perfect distance from the sun, Earth has been able to sustain conditions suitable for the origin and evolution of life. Nearly all life is dependent on the flow of energy, light, and heat from our sun, and Earth's atmosphere and magnetosphere help protect life from the sun's more damaging radiation. That's quite a coincidence, huh? Quite an accident. Quite an accident, but they'll oh. just say it's it worked out because it didn't work out <laughs> other places, right? Right. It all is just so perfect, and they are laying that at the feet of the God of chance. I think the God of the Bible saying that he put it here to be inhabited makes more sense, don't you? Yes, and that is Isaiah 45, 18, which I think everyone should memorize this verse. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. And that was written long before science decided this accident worked out. Genesis 1, 14 talks about the fourth day. This is when God set the lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, not anywhere else in space. That's exactly what they do. Upon. Just like a light in the living room is designed to light up the living room. Yes, it's upon. Not in the front yard. And you talk about in the meetings how that's always a downward aspect. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And we want to point out that the moon is a light, not a reflective rock. That's he, what God says. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. What a big day that was. It was a big day. We also want to include these verses today. Isaiah 48 13. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. The Lord is just reinforcing over and over in the Bible. He is the one who did this. He's the one that did it. It was not the God of chance. In Zechariah 12, 1, we read, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens, and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man with in him. And our last verse today is Hebrews 1 10. And now, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. He kind of says it over and over, doesn't he? I don't know how you can get any more clear. No, especially since he's said it more than once. I want to give everyone some homework. Go find a couple more verses that say the exact same thing. We will move on to the geology section of the Pennsylvania State Museum in our next nugget. Thank you.